Okay, so today I want to talk about how to see objects in front of you and relate them in a way that is accurate in terms of measurements and angles on the sheet of paper. So we're gonna need a pencil, primarily to draw and erase if necessary, but it's also gonna help us with uh, finding certain measurements and angles. So uh, the way I like to start this out is if you are holding the pencil in your drawing hand, so if I'm right-handed, it's gonna be my right hand, and I'm looking down my arm with my right eye, obviously it'd be the opposite if you're left-handed looking down the left side of your arm. So uh, as I look at what's in front of me, I'm closing my left eye, looking down with my right eye, and I can actually hold my pencil straight and I can see how it correlates to objects in front of me. Now, if we're looking at this box and I hold the pencil up, it's very obvious that the verticals are all vertical, okay? Similarly, um, since the box is straight onto us, if I were to bring my pencil up from a lower position and have it exactly horizontal, I see that this box is true with those horizontal aspects to it as well. So it's vertical and horizontal. So that's pretty easy stuff. Um, as we turn the box at a little bit more of an angle, that's when we can turn our pencil to exactly match the angle of what we see in front of us. Okay, As we do this turning to find these angles, we can then represent that same angle on the sheet of paper. Um, the only problem with this sometimes is if people start to tilt the pencil down like this as opposed to keeping it vertical. I oftentimes like to think of this as a propeller or like uh, clock hands. Okay, so you're only pivoting it uh, so that it's still parallel to you. Okay, so that's how you can find some angles. And also the last thing I wanna mention is as you're moving a pencil either horizontally across or up and down um, to see what's in front of you, it can help you see objects as they relate to one another uh, in terms of how they line up. Uh, for example, if I were to show you this, um, this wine glass, uh, we will see that if I hold the pencil in front of me like this, let's see how things line up. Oh, I see that uh, the relationship between the base or the foot of the wine glass and how it relates to the body of the actual drinking vessel part of the glass. Um, so that's one way to think about uh, what's in front of you. Now the other way that a pencil can help you out is by measuring. And again, it's gonna be really important as you sight down your arm to keep your arm straight the whole time. Uh, if you move your arm in or out, it's going to affect uh, the measurements that you make. So um, the way we make a measurement is um, we're gonna be choking up or down on the pencil and we're gonna be using the, the point of the pencil as a way to see one, one area of what we're measuring and then we'll use our thumb to either find that area that we wanna measure against um, and that is what we will hold and then move it around that sheet like that. So as I'm looking down at the box again, okay, I am going to see how wide it is. So I'm holding it horizontal and I'm moving my thumb to about like this, okay? It's not too far, but I'm actually still looking and I'm trying to be as critical as possible. Now, as I move my thumb with that same measurement, I can actually pivot it and say, is it wider than it is tall? And I can absolutely say that it is not. It's actually taller than it is wide. And I would say that based upon my measurement here, I would say if one unit of this box, the width of this box is one, then I'd say the height is going to be one and a quarter or one and a third. And when I would do that, I would go down to my paper. I'm not using this little measurement to make a small box. I would actually invent whatever unit I wanted to have, uh, and I would draw my width as one, and I could do a tick mark to have the two verticals. I could even draw the two verticals. But knowing that this space here is going to be one, I put a little tick mark there, and a quarter here, that's how big 
and in proportion I know this box will be. And when we're doing these, I think it's actually okay to leave yourself these little notes for what the tick marks mean and what they are and how they operate. Um, so that's how I would gauge uh, finding dimensions for something like this. As you keep moving on, you don't have to use the same measurement every time. You can actually say, okay, well I've used this one measurement for one aspect of the box, now I can actually change it based upon what I see. So in this example of the box, I might actually just use the measurement of the side portion of what I see in front of me and use that to carry through to say, if this is one unit here, then how many tall is it? One, two, and do something like that. So that's how we're going to be using these marks, and I'm going to run you through some examples close up here. But it's really important to know what your posture is and how you're supposed to sight down your arm to see the correct angles. Um, and so this is just a little lesson for how useful a pencil can be beyond the marking and the taking away of marks. So let's check out some examples. So here we have a box and everything we do will actually be done on the computer but in real life you'd be drawing on paper. So I like to find the near corner and I'll find the width and from here we can try to figure out our measuring uh, after we find an anchor. So that's one width, two, three, four, five. From here, we can also use that same measurement and find the other side. One, two, three, and a little bit. Okay? From here, I like to try to uh, figure out the angles. That's one angle. That's another angle. There's that other side angle. And there's that. We have another angle and another. And now we'll find a unit of measure to find the length of that flap, and then that angle again. I'm going to find the angle of the near flap, one side, two side, and the angle of that side flap. Measure to find the height, visual height that we see, and then another angle. I see that it goes across, so I will continue that flap there. One last angle there, find the unit of measure, which is actually half of our normal, we see that that's how far that back flap comes up, and then we finish the drawing. I know that was quick, but that's the way I like to move through finding measurements.